Hey everyone, I'm Ferex here, here to bring you some Pokemon Go Battle League battles. Uh, these battles are played in the Holiday Cup. They are from a few days ago, back when hitting Legend was still a big deal. Uh, I do hit Legend at the end of this set, and I hope you enjoy these. So, my team. I'm leading Frostlass. Um, there was a lot of talk during those few days about using Frostlass as a safe swap, uh, and the merits of doing so. And that led a lot of people to bring a, a hard counter to Frostlass in the back. So if I put something that people are expecting as a safe swap in the front, then suddenly they can't really switch to their counter to it very easily because then I'll switch out and that'll leave them in kind of an awkward place. And if they have a, one counter in the back and something weak to it in the back, then they can't really swap at all. And that also just puts them in kind of an awkward position. Um, I also carry Altaria and Stunfisk. Uh, I'm mostly using Altaria as my safe swap. Um, it worked pretty well for those few days, but then a lot of Charmers started showing up and I have since had to change my team. But the meta is moving so fast that by the time you see this video, there's a good chance that Charmers will no longer be as abundant and uh, you can probably start running this team again. So I absolutely botched this first game because I really didn't have an answer for a Shadow Lapras uh, running Ice Shard. Uh, or running anything, really. Um, so I uh, definitely went down shields, ended up in a bad position, and uh, eventually didn't quite make it out. Um, a Lantern comes in running Spark. And that was probably one of the best case scenarios, uh, aside from an Alolan Graveler or Alolan Golem. Um, because Spark doesn't do anything, and it takes 10 Sparks to reach a Hydro Pump, which does do something. Um, so I actually get really close to getting up my third Mud Bomb here, but uh, not quite fast enough. I get Hydro Pump down, and that is the end of that. Wow, that was uh, an odd visual glitch. That's on my end. <clears throat> But good game to my opponent. They definitely played that a lot better than I did. Uh, so next battle is against Sephiroth Ken. Uh, Frostlass into Wigglytuff. These tend to go one of two ways. If they switch out right away, it's probably an ABP team, uh, where the two things in the back are basically the same, uh, just copies of the same thing. Alolan Gravelers, or in this case, uh, Gengar, so obviously the other thing in the back is going to be Haunter. If it wasn't like this, uh, then winning switch advantage would mean something, and they probably would stay in and win switch advantage because Wigglytuff uh, can definitely eat one avalanche shield once and charm all the way down and have energy to, uh, to throw to get that shield back, leaving them in a positive position. The only reason they would have switched out right away is if they had two of the same thing in the back. So I had swapped to Altaria first because... Um, <clears throat> uh, well, I guess it actually wouldn't have made much of a difference. But switching to Altaria pretty much guaranteed that Wigglytuff would come back out to farm down and not Haunter coming out to try to farm down. And I really didn't need Haunter with tons and tons of energy, because Haunter with tons of energy can threaten literally anything, uh, no matter what, depending on the moveset. And since I had no way of knowing what it would be, uh, it just seemed a lot safer to switch to Altaria in the first place. So um, Stunfisk outpaces Haunter ever so slightly. Uh, unless they sneak in lots of Shadow Claws, but even then, uh, it seems like it's running Sludge Bomb, which is not very effective against ground, so I'm not really under any real threat. Uh, I don't even shield this Shadow Punch. Um, if it had turned out to be Shadow Ball, then Frostlass full of energy would have come in and one-shot it anyway. So this game was pretty much over um, as soon as Haunter uh, met my Stunfisk, but my opponent is deciding to stay in and let his Haunter faint, and that is totally fine. Uh, some people are into that. I try to leave before my Pokemon get KO'd because that's just the kind thing to do. Pretty sure the uh, the anime taught us that we're not supposed to leave our Pokemon in to get uh, beat for no reason. Anyway, next match. Uh, Frostlass into Altaria. Great lead for me. They're obviously going to switch out right away. Switching into Marowak. Uh, so I send out Stunfisk. Stunfisk doesn't need to block anything coming from Marowak. Um... Like, the best case scenario for them would be getting a defense drop with the Shadow Bone, and then they could, you know, land another uh, Shadow Bone and um, kind of threaten the KO. But I reach my Mud Bomb uh, full Fire Spin before they reach their second Shadow Bone. So if they want to trade shields, that's fine. I can do it and outpace them, and they decide not to, which is definitely the right move. Now Altaria comes back out to farm me all the way down. I'm going to get off one Discharge... Um, 
sometimes depending on on if well if I don't get the defense drop uh, then I can sometimes get to a second discharge uh, that wasn't the case this time and I sent Frostlass back out Frostlass can definitely take um, one of these hits but I opt to shield just to be safe in case the thing in the back turns out to be bad against uh, Frostlass also and he swaps right away to Litleo, the designated Frostlass counter. That is the reason that I have Frostlass in the front, not the back. <clears throat> Who is met with my Altaria? Um, I could probably have Dragon Breath all the way down, but I didn't want to have to send it a shield. And two Altaria Dragon Breath in each other does plenty of damage on both sides. Uh, I also outpace it, get to my Sky Attack first. And he has to shield, obviously, and, and uh, gets Dragon Breath the rest of the way down. Now we're in the 1-1. I throw out an Avalanche. He could shield, but he would have to get to three Sky Attacks to KO Frostlass. So my opponent doesn't shield, and uh, that's a GG. <sighs> Next up is against Tho Tactical, a uh, very famous battler. Uh, he opens Skarmory, and it turns out to be Steel Wing, but I don't notice right away because I'm just not ready for it, and I misplay this matchup by staying in too long. Uh, then I throw the Avalanche and stay in longer till he gets to a move. Uh, it definitely feels like shielding is the right move at this point, and then I should probably just throw the Avalanche or duck out. Uh, he sneaks in an extra Steel Wing, which means I definitely won't reach a third Avalanche. <clears throat> and should really swap out, but I don't, and just let my Frostlass go down. Um, now I can send out Stunfisk, who can definitely tank whatever the move is. And Ludicolo comes in, and I make my next mistake, which is switching to Altaria. I thought that Altaria could hit Sky Attack before Ludicolo would reach Ice Beam, and uh, turns out that is not the case at all. So I shield the Ice Beam, which is another mistake. I probably should have just let it go. Um, but I didn't really want to eat all of these bubbles and and then probably end up eating have, having to shield a move on my Stunfisk. And the Ice Beam at that range takes me out. Um, could I have survived it otherwise? I'm not sure. Uh, I actually don't know Ludicolo that well because it's very uncommon, uh, which definitely helps to make it more useful because when people are not ready for it, they just they make tons of mistakes, which is exactly what I did. And then Water Gun Lantern comes out. Um, Water Gun Lantern charges really slowly, so I'm probably actually going to be able to get off a third Mud Bomb and take it out before it's able to reach the Hydro Pump. And then hopefully I'll have enough health left to uh, get to a move against Skarmory. <clears throat> so my opponent is counting very carefully and throws the Thunderbolt then because he's not going to reach another move. Wins the CMP tie, and now I throw an undercharged Mud Bomb, which is plenty, to take out Lantern. And then Skarmory comes back in. I sneak in a mud shot, but it doesn't matter because Skarmory was actually already at a move when it swapped out. I did not realize that. <clears throat> so good game, though. Um, next up is against Andoof. I am not familiar with this name. Haven't seen it much. And Frostlass into a Lolan Graveler. So here in an ideal world, I will swap out on three and catch a Rock Blast on Stunfisk. And the ideal scenario happens this time, so I'm doing pretty well in this game so far. Um, then my opponent stays in and lets me charge up and do some damage. Um, now he swaps out and he's at a Rock Blast uh, again. So Venusaur comes in and I have a decent energy advantage so this isn't as terrible as it could be. Um, I would like to win Switch here, but I probably shouldn't. Uh, but I'm definitely not going to throw two shields into trying to get it. So I'm going to shield this first Frenzy Plant and throw and leave it kind of up to my opponent if he wants to win switch and he does so now i'm going to try to throw out my next mud bomb uh, but my opponent cmp ties again with another frenzy plant and this time i'm going to let it go and the reason i didn't the reason i'm willing to let it go this time is just because at that range and since he had to to throw that frenzy plant earlier he has less energy and a little bit less health so i could safely farm it down with frostless now I've got Frostlass with energy, which is always pretty dangerous. Uh, my opponent shields. It's a CMP tie, and I will also shield this Rock Blast. <clears throat> now I don't throw right away. I get one extra Powder Snow in. I could have actually gotten another Powder Snow in, but I want to throw in the middle to avoid the possibility that my opponent would switch out and try to catch the Avalanche 
And now the opposing Frostlass comes out, but I'm one ahead, so I reach the Shadow Ball probably at the same time they reach the Avalanche. Um, but I probably won that CMP tie, and the Shadow Ball goes through, and I take that game. <clears throat> My Frostlass is actually rank 111, so not incredible, so I win a lot of CMP ties with it. And then a swine up comes out as my reward, and I'm not very good at catching swine ups because they uh, are, have a pretty orange circle and also are pretty far away. Oh my gosh, that's so embarrassing. <clears throat> okay, so I hit that and I get there, and now I'm up at 2971. So much dust back then during that week. So next set, um, opening Shadow Victory Bell. Usually a Shadow Victory Bell will stay in and farm all the way down, shield once. <clears throat> um, when that happens, I'm expecting a non-ABB team uh, with normal team composition in the back. So I'm gonna send out Altaria, who will eat the move, and they swap right away, um, which, mean, which tells me that switch advantage probably doesn't matter very much for them. Uh, so it actually probably is an ABB team. And so I build up a little bit of energy with Altaria before swapping. Um, now I'm going to eat two moves uh, just to kind of wait out the clock a little bit. Because these moves don't do nearly as much as a couple of really sharp leaves. Um, so I throw here because I don't want to eat another Stone Edge, and I know I'm probably going to need the Stun Fist to take out the Alolan Graveler that I'm almost certain is back there. Shadow Victory Bell comes back out as expected, throws the move. Um, I shield, it's a CMP tie, and I throw my Mud Bomb. Uh, they're probably going to shield also, and then I'm going to switch out right away. Um, there was a little bit of lag, I got in the Mud Shot, and then I swapped out. And sure enough, it's a Alolan Golem in the back, um, but I already had some energy built up from before. So I hit the Dragon Pulse, and now I'm going to Dragon Breath all the way down. He gets out the 4th Volt Switch, which means that it's either one Stone Edge coming with Wasted Energy or two Rock Blasts back to back. Uh, so no reason not to shield the first one, since even if it's two Rock Blasts, I'm going to have to shield one. <clears throat> and uh, the last Volt Switch doesn't go through, and Shadow Victory Bell faints out before it can KO Altaria, because Altaria is very resistant to Sharp Leaves. Probably comes with being a cloud. Um, leaves just don't really reach clouds, which is not very effective against them. So Altaria in the lead, great for me. They switch to Frost last, their safe swap, um, but that means that I'm one ahead on on Powder Snows. So I go for my Shadow Ball when they would hit it, and they let it go, um, which is it's not what I would have done. And then Marowak comes out, and I swap right away to Altaria, well, a little bit slowly, but I swap out to Altaria because their switch clock isn't done yet. Um, so it's not like they can they can swap out to their own Altaria right away. I'm going to shield the Shadow Bones because I'm going to have to shield something. So it might as well be these. <clears throat> I throw the Sky Attack. Um, they throw some more Fire Spins and then swap out to their own Altaria. Um, now I'm pretty much ahead on energy. So I throw this Sky Attack, they don't shield, so at this point I can Dragon Breath them all the way down uh, and have a Sky Attack ready. So they're going to throw and I shield, knowing that I will be able to get this shield back when I throw my Sky Attack at their Marowak. And here it comes. So now their Marowak's going to have to shield, and I'm going to be able to just Dragon Breath down and send out my Stun Fist, and this game is over. <clears throat> They throw. Um, best case scenario for them would be back to back Shadow Bones where they get a defense drop the first time, but even that wouldn't quite be enough. Um, oh, my opponent concedes. Good game. Next up against Ojato. Frostlass into Kanto Chu. Um, so that's a fun and exciting pick. Um, it's three volt switches to the wild charge, so I was looking at this and assuming, okay, it's wild charge and he's going to duck out. And then it was a brick break, which is crazy. My frost last laughs at me and, and throws the avalanche. So now they only need two to get to their next uh, wild charge, but I am unwilling to spend another shield at this point since I'll just get outpaced to the third one anyway. Uh, defense drops. I send out Stunfisk, and strangely enough, my opponent opts to stay in. 
which is wild. Uh, that tells me that something in the back is really bad against Stunfisk, and they can't risk switching out and giving up switch advantage uh, because Stunfisk will total something back there. Um, so I'm assuming that it's probably like an Alolan Marowak or something. And Frostlass comes out, which is... I mean, it's a good thing that I had all this energy. And I'm throwing straight Mud Bombs instead of Discharges. Discharge is a more energy efficient move, but it's gonna take three hits no matter what. So I'm just going straight Mud Bomb. They're gonna have to shield something. It might as well be a Mud Bomb. Uh, probably gonna be this one, it is. And I will get to my next Mud Bomb before they get to two Avalanches. <clears throat> so if I just shield this Avalanche, and throw this mud bomb at something, a little whack, then they wouldn't be able to uh, get to another move. So I throw that, and I'm gonna try to get to my next mud bomb, but uh, they're going to get to their bone club just before I do, which is totally fine, because now Altaria can come out, uh, Dragon Breath all the way down, um, and have a sky attack ready for Frostlass. So, so as long as I don't throw during this match, I should be totally fine. Altaria can tank anything Marowak can throw, and usually it's just a Shadow Bone, and it was. And my opponent sees that this game is over and concedes. GG. <sighs> oh no, it's COVID-19. I hear saying that out loud will get me demonetized. Good thing I don't have any viewers yet. And on the bright side, COVID opens with Altaria. Uh, switches to Marowak, and I'm going to swap out to Altaria right away. The reason I didn't switch to Stunfisk is because if I send out Stunfisk, then I'll be able to win switch no problem, but there's a decent chance I'll have tons of health left over and, and their Altaria will come out and farm it down. Uh, also I'm just terrified of there being a Charmer somewhere and Altaria has more wins and losses, whereas Stunfisk has a lot of pretty even plays. That Marowak baited there with a Bone Club. And it's not that I was calling the bait, I was just looking at that and thinking, you know, I think I would survive another bo another Shadow Bone anyway. In retrospect, I don't think I would have survived a Shadow Bone, so if they had not baited and just thrown the Shadow Bone, they probably would have gotten that. And I'm probably, I I'm thinking that they were probably looking at that, thinking that's a really heads up play. But uh, nope, in fact, it was just idiocy. I just had no idea and I thought that I would survive a Shadow Bone anyway. That's just a good lesson in why you should not bait. Sometimes your opponent is just dumb and uh, won't realize. So that's definitely what happened there. Um, but looking at the, the remainder of their back line uh, with Vigoroth and Altaria, um, Frostless has a pretty positive matchup against all of those things. So it, it probably actually wouldn't have made a, a difference in the outcome if they had, had thrown the Shadow Bone and KO'd my Altaria or not. <clears throat> uh, so next up is Acro, uh, who opens Stunfisk. Stunfisk is a positive matchup for me, and they switch out right away to Dugong, and I don't know what to do because I don't have a, uh, an answer to Dugong. Uh, Dugong, Lapras, I don't really have much of an answer. My backline is very weak against Ice, and I think I play this matchup about as, as poorly as I possibly can. So I throw the first Shadow Ball, I get debuffed, and then they throw another Icy Wind, and that debuffs me again. And then I stay in, which is a mistake, and I throw, which is a mistake, because this Shadow Ball is expensive and hard to reach, and it did basically nothing. Meanwhile, after they threw that second Icy Wind, they were pretty much out of energy, and that would have been a perfect time for me to swap into Stunfisk, outpace them, and eat up their last shield. Instead, I switched after the third one, which was not super helpful, and their switch clock was already done. So they were just able to swap in their Frostlass. Uh, so I end up in Stunfisk versus Frostlass on the losing end, which was exactly what my opponent was trying to avoid uh, the first time. So also bad for me. This game is actually still salvageable, but I play it wrong, so I do not salvage it. <clears throat> So I'm throwing Mud Bombs. They're not as energy efficient, but they do adequate amounts of damage. My opponent does not shield and sends out their own Stunfisk. So I throw, which I shouldn't bother. I should have just swapped to Altaria right away. 
because um, their switch clock probably was not up yet. <clears throat> but I don't, and then it is, and Dugong comes out, and now I make my next mistake, which is sending out Frostlass again, throwing the Shadow Ball, which they obviously block, and that means that they can build up just a little bit of energy. And uh, now they have a full Icy Wind, and then I switch an Altaria, who eats an Icy Wind right away, as opposed to getting some damage in uh, first. <clears throat> And then he reaches his second Icy Wind. Oh, it's probably like the seventh one, this match, because I just cannot kill this Dugong. And uh, I shards me down. So, yeah, don't, uh, don't, don't do what I just did there. That was, that was bad. But that did round out my 4 of 5 set. I catch the Vulpix because it's not a Swine Up. Oh, I don't. I don't catch it. And then I do. <clears throat> so claim those points and that's up at 3000 and hit legend get a bunch of poses for n i did not know who that was but then i looked it up and it turns out that is a, an anti-hero from i forgot i think it's black and white <clears throat> um so disclaimer this next set of five is not the set immediately following the sets that I just showed you. Uh, before this set occurred, I spent two sets losing a bunch of points to double charm and triple charm teams, which are really obnoxious. And there were some wins that I got in those sets, but the ones that I won were mostly team composition wins, and the ones that I lost were all team comp losses. Uh, so I have skipped those sets and am deciding to show this one because this one has a pretty, gay, uh, a pretty great game in it. And uh, so it will be a lot more informative and a lot less dull to watch than me getting charmed down three times. Uh, so Frostlass didn't shield that sky attack, which was crazy to me. And I was able to Dragon Breath down that Frostlass actually fainted with an avalanche's worth of energy. Um... <clears throat> Obstacle comes back out and throws instantly, which means that it is now depleted. So I sent Frostlass back out. I am going to throw this first avalanche, probably eat up the last shield. But my opponent doesn't shield, and I switch out to a Lolan Marowak, and I mean, a Lolan Marowak is going to get outpaced, and it just it can't beat Stunfisk even with a one shield advantage. <clears throat> So my opponent played this game a lot like the way I played the previous game, which is to say making as many mistakes as possible uh, in a single game. Actually, I think I made like four or five, and I think my opponent here only made like three. So uh, I actually win at being worse at this. <clears throat> Oh yeah, the new pose. Uh, not too much of a fan. Uh, this next opponent, Lalo May. Uh, this battle is not sped up, which tells me that it's great. So, Frostless into Lantern, it's... Wow, regular speed is so slow when you're used to watching at 1.5. So it takes seven sparks to hit a thunderbolt uh so this lantern throws right away and i sneak in one extra powder snow so thunderbolt and shadow ball get reached at the same time uh so right now i'm one ahead uh decide to throw here <clears throat> um yeah lantern seven sparks to a thunderbolt and ten to a hydro pump so i throw here when they're one ahead, and I could swear they didn't swap, but they somehow managed to switch to Obstagoon, even though it did not show at all, and I, I could not believe when I saw that. Um, eats the Shadow Ball, which does nothing because it's triple resisted. I stay in a little bit until I realize that I'm not going to reach another move, and then I swap out to Altaria. So Altaria versus Obstagoon, I don't need to shield anything, um, especially in the beginning, because if one of these Night Slashes gives them the boost, then I will definitely need to shield the, uh, the following Night Slashes. And I can win Switch just by Dragon Breathing down, uh, maybe throwing a move if it, if it comes to that. <clears throat> it's five counters to a 
mag slash, and I am noticing that my opponent is throwing right away at five each time. So uh, that does make it a little bit easy to plan um, to switch when I need to catch moves. Um, here I throw at two when I take the third. Just because if I was any lower and they just shielded, I think they might be able to just counter me down and I might not be able to stop them anymore. <clears throat> but the Obscune falls and my opponent is going to bring out some Frost Lass uh, to get a jump start on energy, which is terrible for me because I've only got a Stun Fisk. And if I've learned anything from the previous few matches, it's that Stun Fisk does not win against Frost Lass uh, in even shields. <clears throat> So, throws the Avalanche. Um, I throw a Discharge, which I think was a mistake. I really should have thrown a Mud Bomb. And also, the Frostlass gets in uh, a free Powder Snow. So, it's it's bad on bad, and it's definitely piling up. Um, here, I see MP Ty throwing the Mud Bomb with their Avalanche. And uh, Frostlass's Avalanches don't actually cost exactly six. It costs five and change. So it's actually 6, 6, and then 5. So with the third one coming at 5 and Stunfisk going 5, 5 uh, for its moves, I'm just going to throw 5 and then swap, even though I hit the Mud Bomb 1 before, because they'll think they're going to see Peach High again. Uh, meanwhile, I can, I'm able to catch them, um, to catch that Avalanche on my Frost Lass, use that as my final shield. But now they still have a shield, so I really still need to hit 2. Um, and they are at four Powder Snows right now, so two away from their next Avalanche, and I have back-to-back. -back. So I was feeling really safe here, and then, like a fool, I threw right away, and they anticipated that and swapped out to catch on Lantern. I undercharge and cut right there because I need this Lantern to survive, but not by that much. Because that one spark brought them to a Thunderbolt. If I had undercharged too much and left them with too much health, they would have just sparked until they hit a uh, Hydro Pump, and there they fainted at what would have been their ninth, which would have been right before they hit the Hydro Pump, so even if they'd stored up there, they wouldn't have been able to. Uh, Stunfist comes back out, throws one more Mud Shot, um, and then I'm able to uh, throw the Mud Bomb, and their Frost Last faints with five Powder Snows of energy. Uh, so if I had undercharged just a tiny bit more, Lantern would have reached Hydro Pump, and if I undercharged a little bit less, then uh, Frostless would have outpaced me to its last move. So that was really close and a really, really stressful game. Um, <clears throat> so this match, next match, back up to regular speed, not as much to commentate on. Altaria, which swaps out right away to Gengar. Altaria is a losing matchup, so it's not like in the, the previous game where someone swapped out right away to Gengar. Uh, this doesn't tell me that there's a Haunter in the back, just that they don't want their Altaria to be left in against Frostlass. <clears throat> so I shield the first move, and I was kind of expecting the next one to be either Shadow Ball or Sludge Bomb, but it wasn't, so it makes me think maybe I don't know how to count after all. <clears throat> and then Altaria comes back out, and I throw my Sky Attack. And the reason I had swapped to Altaria instead of Stunfisk is the same reason as before, because uh, Altaria does a lot better against Altaria than Stunfisk does, and I, if I had sent Stunfisk in, it would have probably won with tons of energy, or with tons of health, and Altaria would have come back out and farmed down. And then my opponent swaps into Marowak, and I'm going to outpace it to its moves, so if it wants to burn shields, that's totally fine with me. It gets the defense drop, which makes this uh, slightly threatening. <clears throat> but doesn't shield and I'll still outpace gets in half a free fire spin and I'm going to throw my mud bomb they don't shield, that's fine Altaria comes back out and this is actually looking slightly close I throw my discharge to try to burn up their last shield meanwhile they're getting energy and I can't switch back to frost last just yet um, here I can at the last second but don't quite make it uh, but Frostlass has enough energy to survive one move anyway, so this first Sky Attack will be fine, and they're going to get to a second move. But even if it's a Dragon Pulse, I would barely survive it. <clears throat> but it's just a Sky Attack, and I make it in Powder Snow down. What a strange pose and a strange transition my avatar makes. Uh, next match is against McBurber. 
who has a fantastic name. Uh, open Shadow Victory Bell. So he's staying in, and that is the kind of normal way to play it. The only time they've switched out is when it's an ABB team. And then Altaria out, and for some reason Victory Bell doesn't throw. Uh, and then it's Wigglytuff out, so I switch right away to Stunfist, and they respond with their own Altaria. So this is not great for me. Um, Stunfisk definitely has a slightly negative matchup to Altaria, but Altaria decides to throw right away, and I shield, knowing that this is a Sky Attack just because I kind of need Stunfisk to survive, because uh, Altaria has some play against Altaria, but I'm definitely not going to be able to take out Wigglytuff with my Altaria unless I have a bunch of energy and some amount of damage has already been done. So I really need to burn this last shield, and... I make a mistake here in the way I play this. <clears throat> After the sky attack comes out, I should build up to discharge and throw to try to force the last shield out. Instead, I switch to Altaria to try to maybe Dragon Breath down because I thought I had a, some slight jump on switch time, but really wasn't very uh, significant. I get to the next sky attack, but they still have a shield, so they obviously will just shield this and since they have charmed me all the way down, they will be full of energy and can throw right away. <clears throat> and I very much do not survive an Ice Beam from that range. Uh, next match against La Ferruccio, I think. Uh, Frost Last Mirror. I'm going to try to sneak in an extra Powder Snow if possible and just be cognizant of whether they get one or not. They do, so that's bad for me. And I throw the Shadow Ball. So they're one Powder Snow ahead. Move a little bit more. Uh, I shield this. And it turns out to be an Avalanche Bait. So now they're two ahead of me. So two before I reach my Shadow Ball, I switch because I'm figuring they're going to throw before I reach mine. Uh, so I catch the Shadow Ball on my Vigoroth, they pause ever so slightly, or have a tidy amount of lag. I try to build up to a Bulldoze, they switch out before that, uh, which means I can unload uh, all of these this energy on Wigglytuff, which is actually, I'm, I'm totally fine with that. <clears throat> I could have snuck in another counter there, instead they got like a little bit of an extra charm. <clears throat> But I reach my third body slam uh, before I get KO'd anyway. So here it's up to them if they want to maintain switch, and they do. Which I don't think was the right choice, because Frostless is just going to come out and farm down and get a little bit more energy. Uh, so now I have a shield, and they send out an Obstagoon, which would outpace me. So uh, rather than switch and, and risk the Frostless coming in and farming down, I decided to just stay in, which may not have been the right choice. But I empty the rest of my energy, CMP tying them with their Night Slash. <clears throat> There's a little bit of lag, so I don't really have a, an accurate idea of count. But my opponent throws right away, and actually throws again, which means they had back-to-back, -back, so they had way more energy than I thought they did. Um, but with Frostlass at that health, I can definitely outpace it to a discharge since they were depleted on energy. Uh, make this discharge in, which will just barely be enough to take them out. <clears throat> so that was the last battle of that set. Uh, as you can see, my rating was all the way down at 2897, which is a, a lot lower than it was when I hit Legend. And uh, this is the, fi the first positive set I had since hitting Legend. Um, and it was this Pika Libre, uh, 536. Which I was looking at, and I was like, wow, that seems really high. Is that the hundo? But for some reason, didn't check, even though I knew I was going to be posting this video. Uh, so here is another video of this 536 Season 6 Pikachu Libre, and it is, in fact, the hundo. So, got that. Um, hope those battles were fun to watch. Hope you learned something, if you're here to learn something. And... This is my first video, so please like and comment and subscribe. Those things make you a good citizen, so please do that. Uh, also, it will make me feel really nice, because making these videos is more difficult than I thought it would be, and uh, encouragement would be pretty dope. Anyway, thanks again.